Good morning. They strategically placed me before lunch. <laughs> so I hope you're all hungry. <laughs> I hope you'll bear with me. Um, I am a chef and a restaurateur. At the end of this year, my husband and I will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of the opening of Bacchanalia, our first restaurant. This is an amazing milestone for us. In 1992, we moved to Georgia. We started a farm. We opened a small business. We cultivated a um, local food movement and have sustained all our lofty goals through a few recessions, a pandemic, and the ever-changing culinary climate of Georgia and beyond. In those 30 years, we have moved Bacchanalia twice, opened six or seven other restaurants, a retail store, uh, closed a couple of restaurants, and had the great fortune of working with incredibly talented chefs and service professionals. Over the years, hundreds of chefs have worked in our kitchen, and the one true takeaway for all of them has been to respect local food, food grown in our communities in a sustainable manner. Clifford was born in Hawaii, and I am, I had to say that the way, Hawaii, and I in Connecticut, and we both found our home here in Cartersville on Summerlin Farm. William Henry Stiles was my great-great-great-grandfather. He settled on this property in 1840 for his family, a retreat on the banks of the Etowah River um, to escape the low country heat of Savannah. My mom, Julielma Stiles, lived on that property um, for many years until they moved into town, as she says, uh, West Main Street, Cartersville. <laughs> so she moved seven miles away. Um, the restaurant industry offered me uh, financial independence when I was in college, when I was a server. I loved the team atmosphere and I knew that this would be my career. Since then, our culinary careers, both Clifford, a chef, and mine, have crossed the continent from Nantucket to San Francisco to Manhattan and to Atlanta and Summerlin Farm. In our time in San Francisco in the 1980s uh, was when women chefs and the local food movement dominated the culinary landscape. San Francisco was where it all started. While in San Francisco at culinary school, I worked for Judy Rogers at Zuni Cafe, the parade of farmers, fishermen, ranchers that came through our kitchen offering what they had harvested that day um, set my culinary uh, philosophy in place. I knew that this was how I would proceed in our industry. By the time Clifford and I arrived at Summerlin Farm, it was in an abysmal state. It was planted 100% in soybeans, grown commercially for oil. They were dead on the vine waiting to be harvested. The soil was depleted. We weren't dismayed. We found our home. We started to build and cultivate and most importantly, look for a location for our restaurant Bacchanalia. That fall, we signed a lease on a historic home in Buckhead, in the northwest neighborhood of Buckhead in Atlanta. Uh, we converted the garage into our kitchen. The dining room was the rooms of the home that sat exactly 50 people at full capacity. By January 1993, we had opened our first restaurant. In those days, Bacchanalia had exactly four employees, Clifford and myself, Suleiman Kulabali, who is our prep cook and uh, butcher, moved from Manhattan with us to open the restaurant, actually lived on Summerlin Farm shortly with us while we were getting ready. And my sister Frances moved from Connecticut to run to the front of the house. And surprisingly, all four of us still work together and speak together, mostly civilly. <laughs> At that time in 1993, there was exactly one 
farm that sold commercially to restaurants, Ashland Farm. They grew lovely salad greens and eventually microgreens when it became trendy. Meanwhile, at Summerlin Farm, our home grew and our garden grew. And much of the produce and also eggs go into our restaurant. While we continue to grow our businesses, we also celebrated the growing local farm business in Atlanta and the surrounds. Our farm, year-round, we grow crops. We also are very fortunate to have ancestral um, nut and fruit, nut trees and fruit bushes that we harvest happily, and all of those eggs. We have the privilege of being very patient farmers. We, the process has been one of trial and error. I, Clifford in Hawaii was not a farmer, and I in Connecticut certainly was not. Um, but we've had more successes than we can imagine. When our hens aren't laying or we're in the middle of a historic drought, we have the luxury of relying on our business to support and grow our farm. We realize that this is not the same luxury that our um, fellow growers and farmers have, and that makes us all the more appreciative of how hard they work and how passionate they are. Our timeline behind me now shows how we have progressed over the years, but what it also shows is how the farming, the local farm industry has grown and how far we've come, how many producers we have available to buy from at this time. In our kitchens, we often use the adage, what grows together goes together. Uh, peach and blueberry cobbler, um, strawberry and rhubarb pie, uh, corn and tomatoes and a succotash. This philosophy is a Native American philosophy. The three sisters method of growing was one they abided by in their, far, in their small gardens. Corn, beans, and squash grew together symbiotically. The corn provided the stalks for the beans to grow. The beans fixed the nitrogen, and the squash provided the shade over the root systems to prevent weed growth and also keep the soil moist. Complicated yet simple. These provide not only a very delicious meal, but also are nutritionally balanced. In the South, the punishing summer heat is almost made bearable by the beautiful produce that we harvest in the summer months of July and August. We love this time of year in our restaurants because these ingredients call for a very simple preparation. They shine on their own, often not even needing to be cooked. Gazpacho salad are, is exactly what grows in our garden in the summer. It's a very delicious dish that utilizes what we have harvested from our garden. Our summer garden right now are melons, tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, and cucumbers, and more cucumbers. <laughs> I have made one of these from our summer garden for you to sample at lunch today, and I also left a recipe in case you wanted to try it. Over these decades of our businesses, we have trade stayed true to what we believe should be how food is consumed. This dictates what we serve, when we serve. The fruits and the vegetables on our very seasonal menus. Better quality produce, produce that is harvested fresh and ripe, that doesn't travel across the country, equals more delicious food. Spending dollars in your community helps the businesses thrive and develops relationships. This support has grown our local food, far, our local farmers in the Georgia area. When, when we opened Bacchanalia, we had exactly one grower. We had Ashland Farms. Now we have many. 
Cartersville and Bartow County is traditionally a agriculture community. We had a little industry. I live near Bowen Power Plant and, uh, and a booming and really historic downtown area creates a perfect setting for a local farmer's market. Carter's Farmer's Market in the center of town has grown from a handful of vendors in 2019 to 47 right now. These farmers, makers, ranchers, and harvesters supply the people of Cartersville with breads, produce, seafood, meat, honey, mushrooms, jam, and an overwhelming sense of community. Both vendor sales and traffic have tripled in the past three years. Wholesome Wave and EBT usage, or SNAP, recently added will top $6,000 this year. Wholesome Wave is a nonprofit organization started in 2007. We raise funds that help farmers markets match the food stamp dollars, both ensuring healthy, food choices, and also adding money back into the farm community. 95% of the people at the farmer's market recently polled in Cartersville um, said they were there specifically for the farmer's market. The current growth and activation of the shuttered shops downtown is partly attributed to the increase in traffic at the Saturday's farmer's market. Intentional and directing, directed spending of your food dollars in your community farmer's market will make a difference. Better, it's better for the environment, a more sustainable food system. Growing food grows community, grows history, and grows family around your table. We spent our food dollars for our businesses within the local farm community, and it grew. I encourage you all to spend a morning at your local farmer's market. Thank you.